Hello, I'm Ben Tuman, and welcome to Skipped History, brought to you in a New York City park. Today's story is about a 1975 court case that exposes the polarizing history of high school history. I read about it in Lies My Teacher Told Me by James Lowen, who was one of the plaintiffs. To frame his case, let's start with a more famous one, Brown v. Board of Education, the 1954 Supreme Court ruling that struck down segregated schools. Kind of. Turns out, the stroke of a pen doesn't make you suddenly go, oh, integration, why didn't I think of that? And that was the case in Mississippi, where 10 years after the ruling, the state still spent four times more on white students than it did on black students. The inequities extended to curricula, where state-mandated textbooks ignored achievements by black Americans, glossed over the civil rights movement, and glorified the Southern way of life, which, as best I understand it, consisted of sipping mint juleps and seersucker suits while enjoying the profits generated from forced labor. In 1974, two authors, James Lowen and Charles Salas, set out to redefine Mississippi's history in Mississippi Conflict and Change. Unlike previous textbooks, theirs included statements like white Southerners created an ideology justifying slavery, black children received especially poor treatment in Mississippi's school system, and the KKK became an instrument of terror throughout the South. Those should not be controversial statements, and to some, they weren't. The book won accolades among educators and historians for presenting a fuller summary of Mississippi's history. But other people weren't as keen, including five on the Mississippi State Textbook Purchasing Board. Let's roll back a sec. What is a state textbook purchasing board? Well, it's kind of like having a personal shopper you've never met who periodically tells you what boring books you just have to read, which, come to think of it, might explain my friend count on Goodreads. Anyway, in 1974, the Mississippi Textbook Board rejected adoption of conflict and change in a 5-2 to two vote because, as one board member said, the book was too racially oriented. Instead, the board's decision meant that the hundreds of thousands of Mississippi kids who took ninth grade history would have to read Your Mississippi by John K. Bettersworth. Bettersworth's book, which is such a hard word to say, was not better, which wasn't news to civil rights activists. In 1964, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee had started a freedom school in Mississippi that taught students the lessons they didn't learn in school and to help them challenge the myths of our society. Your Mississippi perpetuated those myths, glorifying segregationist Mississippi governors like Ross Barnett and Theodore Bilbo, who, yes, was very short, had hairy feet, and reacted to adversity like this. <laughs> Your Mississippi also said that Reconstruction, the brief period after the Civil War when black citizens finally earned some civil rights, was a worse battle than the war had ever been, which to a white supremacist might be true. But as a student who attended the Freedom School in Mississippi asked, why should we go to school and read books that tell us that racists like Ross Barnett and Bilbo were nice men when after Reconstruction, the whites started lynching us and treating us like slaves again with the segregation? A great question. More lynchings occurred in Mississippi than in any other state. Hence why, on page 178 of Conflict and Change, Lowen and Salas included a photo of a man who'd been lynched. That photo became the focal point of the lawsuit that they brought against the Mississippi State Textbook Purchasing Board, arguing that the board limited academic freedom. The case went to trial in 1980, and the climax came when the Mississippi State Attorney General asked a member of the board, John Turnipseed, and I swear all these names are real, why he had objected to conflict and change. Turnipseed had the court turn to page 178, and pointing to the photo of the lynching, he said, Now, you know some ninth graders are pretty big, especially black male ninth graders, and I worry that teachers, especially white lady teachers, would have trouble controlling their classes with material like this in the book. At that point, 83-year-old Judge Orma R. Smith, whose picture I couldn't find on the internet, but whom I imagined looked like this, stepped in, and of the photo of the lynching, he asked, but that happened, didn't it? Didn't Mississippi have more lynchings than any other state? Well, yes, Turnipseed conceded, but that all happened so long ago. Why dwell on it now? To which Judge Smith replied, well, it is a history book. Lowen and Salas won the case, and their book was thereafter taught in schools. But had they won the war? As late as 2011, a conservative think tank evaluating U.S. history standards gave Mississippi an F, 
noting that save for a passing reference to Reconstruction in high school courses, slavery was barely mentioned, and its particular significance in Mississippi was ignored. Across all states, the average grade was barely a D, which you know is bad, because that's the grade I gave The Hobbit on Goodreads after learning about its racist governor protagonist. What gives? Why is the history that so many students learn so bad? How many students have had to learn a racist, mythological, disempowering, maddeningly false version of the past? Well, as it turns out, the answers to those questions has a lot to do with one historian active in the 1910s. Tune in next time to learn more about that bit of skipped history.